Proverbs 3 and 5 reminds us that, that if we trust in the Lord with all of our heart, and we ought to lean not to our own understanding and in all of our ways acknowledge him, he will direct our path. So when, when, when the Lord gives us a no, a no answer, we must trust that whatever we ask God was then not in his will for our lives. Let me also tell you that God will also say, wait, not now. I could give you many scriptural examples of God telling us to wait. Abraham, Abraham, the father of the faithful, is one good example. Hannah, the one we lifted up a minute ago, is another. Even though God told Hannah, yes, he first told her, wait the children of israel are, are another example when they were in bondage for over 400 years praying to god calling out to god petitioning god god waited before he delivered them sometimes hearing wait is even harder than hearing no because it means then that we have to be patient while waiting is difficult we can be thankful god is in control and trust that his timing is always perfect God always, and do you believe this? God always wants the best for our lives. Anybody believe that today? He does not want us to suffer needlessly. The Lord says through Jeremiah, chapter number 29, verse 11, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to do you good and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. Whether the answer is yes, no, or wait, we must be assured that God is always in control and everything is going to be all right. So there it is, three answers from God, yes, no, wait. So when we pray, we will get a varied of these answers from God. And so we have to trust God. But I want to share with you this. I know the answer that all of us will get from God if we trust him. And in, in other words, I know the answer that all of us will get the same answer. See, we'll get a yes, a no, or a wait. But here's something I want to share with you, that every time you pray, you'll get this. This is, an, this is an answer that every time you petition God, you'll always get this. There is a promise that God will fulfill each and every time you ask, seek, or not. God will always give you the promise, and here it is, the promise of his peace. Now, we could have ended the sermon right there. Because that, that, that's the cliff note part right there. Here's the answer to all of your prayers. Peace. Some of y'all don't understand how important peace is. If you live with a whole lot of hell, you know how important peace is. Amen. If you, you had a lot of chaos and confusion, you know what it means then to have peace. See, I want to have peace more than I ha want to have anything else. In this life see you can have a new house but take that but a new house without God's peace will never be a home a new car without God's peace will never really be a comfortable ride a new job without God's peace will always be work without real reward a new relationship without God's peace will always be headed for ruin are y'all hearing me today the truth is if you are living without God's peace you will never really have a life. Tell your neighbor to get a life. Because when we tell you to get a life, we're really telling you to get some peace. See, our apostle, somebody say our apostle. Let me teach you something right there. Why do I call him our apostle? Because most of you in here, if not all of us in here, are Gentiles. There were 12 disciples that became apostles, but they were the apostles really to the Jews. Paul is the apostle born out of due time. And so he's the only apostle officially for the Gentiles, non-Jewish people. So Paul is our apostle, but hear what he says to us. He tells us how then we can acquire the promise of peace. And we do it through our prayers. Do I have any praying people in here? Let me jump to it real quick. Three things he says.